What's up, Disney dudes and dudettes? In this video, we'll be talking about what if Disney made a Phantom of the Opera movie coming up. So it's no secret that the majority of Disney films that you grew up with and know and love were actually based off of books and plays. Yep, you heard that right. Most of your favorite Disney films were based off of books, and there happens to be one that I absolutely cannot understand why Disney hasn't adapted into an actual Disney film, and that is The Phantom of the Opera. This one is kind of, I, I'm so surprised that Disney actually hasn't done this, especially with the fact that when you consider the likes of films like Beauty and the Beast, and Hunchback of Notre Dame. They're very similar in some respects to, you know, Phantom of the Opera. Granted, there are some significant differences, but you would think that Disney by now would have had a Phantom of the Opera film. And so I thought to myself, what would a Phantom of the Opera film look like if Disney had done it? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a what-if scenario if Disney did the Phantom of the Opera. What would the story be and what would the characters look like? So without further ado, let's get into it. So one big complaint about the Phantom of the Opera, you know, play as well as the movies is that it's kind of, you know, dark and doesn't really tug on the heartstrings. I mean, in some adaptations that's successful, but in the most of the majority of the adaptations is that it's just too dark and you can't really resonate with the phantom you know character in the film so what i wanted to do is i wanted to take this a step further and kind of give a what if scenario if you know disney actually did the phantom of the opera so here is a bit of concept art as well as what the storyline would be so the story begins with an opening shot in the shadows of the paris opera house a disfigured orphan named eric has secretly taken refuge and for you guys who didn't know eric is actually who ends up becoming the phantom of the opera but before that eric was actually an orphan in the story and that because of this he was actually you know, all his life um, scorned by society for his ghastly facial deformities. And so that's why, you know, nobody really wanted to take care of him and he would, had nowhere else to go. So he literally would seek refuge in the opera house and he found solace in the soaring music performed on the opera stage each night. Watching from the rafters in his masquerade disguise, he develops an obsession with the ingenuine Christine and her celestial singing voice. But on one fateful night, a terrible fire erupts backstage trapping Christine. Eric is the one who actually risks his life to whisk her to safety. Although, you know, Christine is injured, he carries her through the subterranean labyrinths to his home beneath the opera house to nurse her back to health. Though initially terrified of his monstrous appearance, Christine slowly sees beyond Eric's marred face that he is actually a gentle soul and has great musical talents waiting to be heard. And so what's really cool about this is that through the majority of the film, they actually develop a deep friendship over the power of music. She actually has, you know, him secretly be her tutor when, you know, the opera house, when the music, you know, in the shows were done, they would, you know, teach and, uh, you know, sing together for hours and hours. And so... It's really cool to think about, you know, how they would bond over the fact of, you know, the power of music. And so this would, you know, lead from them being, you know, strangers to them friends and then later on lovers. But there happens to be another figure in the tale and that is Roclair. Roclair pretty much is that of a Gaston in the Phantom of the Opera. He's this handsome slash backstabbing and sinister guy who wants nothing more just to end up with Christine and will do anything he can to eliminate the opponent. And when he catches wind about, you know, Christine uh, having this mysterious music tutor, he then devises a plan to, and then convinces Christine, unbeknownst to her, to host a masquerade ball in the hopes that, you know, she would be able to see Eric again, but he's actually going to use it as a ploy to expose Eric to the world. And so at this great ball, that's a grand, you know, masquerade, you know, Eric emerges and it's really cool because, you know, at first you don't see him, but you hear his voice, but then he, you know, comes in all dramatic, really cool, like Disney uh, entrance style, you know, Disney with their entrances. So this, I was like, oh, I just imagining it. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be really cool. Unfortunately, though, things take a turn for the worst when Reclair actually rips off Eric's mask, exposing his marred face in front of everyone, thinking that he's this, you know, monster. And so Reclair then, you know, dubs him the name the Phantom of the Opera because of how scary he is. And so, you know, Eric, who's then just, you know, absolutely in tears, runs away scared while Christine tries to, you know, uh, comfort him 
but unfortunately it stopped by Reclair. Reclair then, out of jealousy, it's not bad enough that he destroyed, you know, Eric's reputation, decides to once and for all get rid of him. And so he has Christine imprisoned and then, you know, tries to burn down the entire opera house, this time the basement part where, you know, uh, Eric resides, hoping to get rid of him. But through a series of, you know, allies, you know, within the um, underground tunnels, uh, they actually help Christine to get out. And, uh, you know, Christine and these new friends of Eric's um, within the tunnels, they all team up to be able to stop Reclair Re once and for all. And so with their help and that of Eric's, they manage to defeat Reclair and restore order. He gets, you know, imprisoned. And um, then at the very end, this is where it gets very interesting. You know, Christine sings a very powerful song about Eric embracing his, you know, disability and not being ashamed by it. It's very similar to that of This Is Me. I see your pain A heart that's strong Yet bound by chains Your genius shines It lights the night But shadows cast You hide from sight You fear the world their cruel disdain A broken face A life in vain But in my eyes I see your worth A love that's true Your soul's a masterpiece, let your light reside We'll face the dark, together we'll stride Hand in hand, my love, you don't have to hide Every flaw makes you who you are Embrace the night, feel the light You're a shining star You don't have to hide from the world outside Your soul's a masterpiece, let your light reside We'll face the dark, together we'll strive Hand in hand, my love, you don't have to hide
you know, and just thinking about it, it'd be very cool because of the fact that like, you know, in Greatest Showman, they are, you know, throughout their entire lives, you know, treated as outcasts because of the way they, you know, look and uh, because of like, you know, whatever disability or whatever they have. And um, so this would be a very powerful moment for Eric, you know, to realize that, you know, he was, you know, born this way with his disability and that he shouldn't have to hide it, but embrace it. And so at the very end of the film, it actually concludes with Eric and uh, Christine beginning a new uh, segment of the opera house where Eric is actually singing with her side by side. And uh, even though he has, you know, no mask at this time, that the entire world is then bracing him, you know, with open arms, you know, take it or leave it. And so it's this kind of very cool of, uh, you know, this is me, you know, kind of segment where he's just, you know, standing side by side with Christine singing their duet. And so overall, guys, I think this would be absolutely an amazing Disney film, you know, really capitalizing on the power of music and, you know, embracing your, uh, you know, embracing, you know, disabilities and not being ashamed of that, but also just embracing it. You know, that's what makes, uh, you know, you special. And so I think this would be a very incredible message. You know, we've had like, you know, similar scenarios with The Hunchback of Notre Dame, but this honestly could be the next big Disney film. I don't know about you guys, but this would be absolutely amazing. Let me know, guys, would you love to see a Phantom of the Opera movie in this style by Disney? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you had any ideas of what you would love to see in a Disney film, whether it's Phantom of the Opera or any other adaptation or book that you would love to see as a Disney film, I would love to know. Leave a comment down below and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified every Thursday when we have a new video. And as always, have a Disney day.